sports. It's in the game. EA Sports. It's in the game. Hello, everybody. I'm Jonathan Coachman, and this is Super Bowl Sunday on EA Sports. On tap is what should be a pretty good matchup between the Washington Redskins and the Indianapolis Colts. With that, it's time for Super Bowl 54, and we'll send you now to Miami, standing by to call their fourth Super Bowl together. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Okay, Coach. Well, the road ends here. It has been a wild, often unpredictable 2019 season. And now it's time for the greatest spectacle in all of sports. Super Bowl 54 from Miami. You know, this town has played host to 10 Super Bowls in the past. And tonight, we write chapter number 11. And what a matchup we've got. Tonight, it's all on the line. We play for the Lombardi Trophy as it'll be the AFC champion Indianapolis Colts taking on the NFC champions, the Washington Redskins. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gauden, and Charles, these Colts, a trendy pick to get to the Super Bowl prior to the season, and they lived up to the hype and then some, and now they shoot for their second win as residents of Indianapolis and their third Super Bowl title overall. And conjuring up images of 2007 when they won Super Bowl 41 with one guy named, uh, what was it again? Peyton. Peyton Manning, Manning at quarterback when they beat the Bears. Remember, that was played in the rain, and that was also played where? Miami. Right here where we are now. And then the Baltimore Colts, they won Super Bowl V over the Dallas Cowboys. Do you remember who kicked the winning field goal in that one? Ooh, come no, on, come no, on. No. One Jim O'Brien. Oh, uh, Jimmy boy. Knocks down the winning field goal, and the Colts win that one over the Cowboys. So this Colts team seeking another Super Bowl title. Meanwhile, the Redskins, this is a team, to be frank, nobody thought would be here at the start of the year. Even the most diehard of Redskins fans would probably tell you that. But here they are, Charles, looking for what would be the franchise's fourth title in this, their sixth appearance. And we go back to 1992, the last time that this team won a Super Bowl, and that was Super Bowl 26. That's more than a quarter of a century ago. They also won Super Bowl 17. Joe Theismann was a the quarterback then. John Riggins running the football, the diesel. But Super Bowl 22 is the one we'll always remember. Doug Williams, the first black starting quarterback in a Super Bowl, also the MVP as they blew away the Denver Broncos. Can they recreate history and raise another Super Bowl trophy? We're about to find out. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So out comes the Redskins offense now onto the field. They'll be led out by the final pick of the first round in 2018 out of Louisville. It's Lamar Jackson. Here's the first carry now for Todd Gurley. It'll go as a loss of a yard on the game's first play. Second down. Anytime you call an inside running play, you just know there should be a lot of congestion there. You're counting on your offensive line to take control of the line of scrimmage. That didn't happen in this case, and that play got bottled up. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Here's a quick throw out to Wilson. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. It's a loss of two, now third down. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage, even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't help them at contract time. Jackson now. Oh, he almost picked it. Nearly a turnover there on their opening drive. And that's a throw he'd like to have back. Now fourth down. Not the opening possession they were looking for, especially on the road. No doubt about it, because they wanted to come out and establish a little momentum right away. But now bringing up a fourth down, an empty possession, not what they were seeking. And the punt team on now as this one's sent away. Now it's Ginn. A big boot that time, 57 yards the official distance. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. Line of 
line scrimmage at the 31 now on first and 10. I got you. I got you. Let me hit. They'll start on the ground. It's Edo Smith. Tackle made there by Frank Clark. Here's the offense, and we give you too much power here. We let you highlight the player. Why'd you choose Zeitler? Because I think the big guys up front never get enough credit. Kevin Zeitler, a guard, tough, nasty. We've got to give him some love. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. They'll run it here with Smith. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. That was a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. A first down carry for Smith. And he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. Indianapolis moving the chains there on a gain of 12. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. And if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit, thanking them for that much space to run with. Well, nowhere to go at all on that first down run as they will get to him behind the line of scrimmage. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means if I want to run it inside, if you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result, negative yardage. On second and 11 now. Stafford, open man is on single right side. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Down on the field, we've got an injured Colt after that last play. We'll get an update when we come back to Miami. A first carry now. This is Hill. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. And here is the Redskin defense. When you play against Carlos Dunlop, you have to think protecting your passer. He knows how to get upfield and rush the quarterback. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. Now Stafford, flush to his right. Now he'll pull it down. The escapability in evidence there is that one good for 15 and a first. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. A chance for the first score of this Super Bowl. Here's first and goal. They'll try to pound it in with Hill. And that'll get him halfway there as he takes it from the six to the three-yard line. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? Now here's Hill, and he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. The second down play results in a loss of two yards. This has been a long drive. You got to figure a field goal would be a letdown. Can they convert now? On and he takes it in for a Colts score with the first touchdown of this Super Bowl as his guys are able to strike first here in this opening quarter. An ideal start for them, really. You force the punt, and then you go down and score. And you've got to see a fist pump on the sideline from the head coach, don't you? Because he's turned into his bench, and he's telling his team, this is how we prepare. Force the punt, go downfield and score. I told you guys, it's just like a boxer in the gym preparing for the fight. Now we get to turn it all loose. Crater for the extra point, and that makes the score 7-0. So that one a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it's finished off with a five-yard touchdown run. After the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. Out comes this offensive unit as they get set to take over here. 
And the last drive, the first drive for them, not very good. Three and out. What do they go to here? Well, you don't look down at your play sheet and say, this is what the problem is. Yeah, let's find out who my playmakers are. Get the ball in their hands and maybe the offense will move a little bit better. Sometimes it's more important to get it to the right people rather than dialing up the right number. Exactly. Or the, a fight for the football and it's intercepted. Picked up by James Bradbury. And the possession is theirs at their own 43-yard line. Well, they didn't exactly show patience there, did they? Just down the score, they come out firing right away and compound things by throwing an interception. They put their defense in a really tough spot. A big play there for Indy. 41 yards on the ground. He's been reliable all year, and he continues that reliability here on the biggest stage. And when we were in a production meeting with the offensive coordinator, didn't he kind of mention, maybe even smile, about the idea of running the football? It's worked well for them. And all the way down inside the five to the four. A solid pickup of 12 yards, and now they're knocking on the door consecutive plays now where that offensive line has really created a lot of space and we've seen the confidence rise haven't we it borders on arrogance now and that's that good arrogance believing you can run the football and he's into the end zone touchdown indianapolis brian hill his second touchdown of this super bowl and the colts they add on to their advantage and always a good first half when you can hit pay dirt twice and it never hurts to have that good feeling as the game moves on. Just think about halftime. If, if that's is all he gets, he'll just sit there at the half and think, all right, two already. I can get some more. I can get some more. And he'll be encouraging his offensive line to create some space. Extra point good by Prater. And that'll make the score 14 to zip. Scoring summary, three-play drive. And it results in a four-yard touchdown run. And after the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Out comes Washington's offense as they get set to take over here. Already down two touchdowns here in the first half. This becomes a pretty important drive, doesn't it? It certainly does, and a lot of the teams script plays. We know that, right? They, they have a script to start the ball game, and typically those scripts go between 12 and 24, 25 plays. Down two touchdowns early. Probably not. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Von Miller able to take him down. It's a loss of three. Brandon, if I'm an offensive coordinator and I see an all-out rush like that, I file it away because I'm going to use their aggressiveness against them as this game goes on. I'm going to hit them with a screen soon. Following the sack, they'll try to change their fortune here on second and 13. Throwing is Jackson. And this is going to be caught. He won the fight for the football. His first catch of this Super Bowl, and it'll be good for a first down. When you're struggling on offense, you're looking for anything possible to get you going. Sometimes you do it like basketball teams that don't normally press. You put a press on, bring people to life, make them move a little bit quicker. Maybe that'll help them as they head towards the half. On first down, it's Gurley. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. Domita Pecco, the one to get him down. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, and that's what their job is, and really a lot of the time they have to... Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Domina Pecco racks up the sack. Well, someone's been up to the task so far in this game. They are already up a couple of scores, Brandon, and guess what? I think they're just going to pin their ears back now and get upfield and get after the quarterback. It's been such an impressive first half to get that lead. Jackson on third and long. That's complete to Disley, the tight end. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. Well, that's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath, by all means. 
And the Redskins send out their putter as he'll kick it away for the second time. And did they keep it in? They did. They kept it in. It's down to close to the goal line at the one-yard line. You rarely call your punter a weapon, but he certainly was there. How about that? Pinning him down at the one-yard line and helping out the defense in a big way. I'm telling you what, if I'm a defensive coordinator, I might be thinking safety right now. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. They scored a touchdown the last time they had the football, but things are going to be a little bit more difficult this time. Well, certainly, because where they're starting, the goal isn't even thinking about a touchdown at this point. They're thinking about field position. A couple of first downs in order to give some room for their punter and maybe flip the field position for their defense. On second down, it's Smith. Well, that gives them a little room, but not much. A gain of two to the five. They follow up the first down one-yard run with a minimal gain of two. That didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just started in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. Well, they don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. Two minutes even on the clock in the first half of Super Bowl 54. Coming up at halftime, I'll go from one personality, that's you, Charles Davis, to another one in Orlando, the coach. He'll have stats and scores from around the NFL. You and Jonathan Coachman, both larger than life. No doubt about it. But you're stuck with me in this booth. <laughs> yes, and he's I miles am. away and smiling. And happy. That one good for 24 yards. Now it's Stanford. Hits his target. It's Taylor Gabriel. A gain of 11 that time and a Colts first down. We didn't need to ask around the league, but we got to confirm this guy's a good player. They've got to find a way to get him more involved, call a few more plays that target him. Absolutely, because here we are toward the end of the first half, and that's the first target, not just the first catch, first target. Here's Stafford. And this one caught by Cameron Bray. Call that a very strong gain of 24. But when you hit him on the move like that, and he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam, oh boy, it's going to be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Throwing again at Stafford. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Well, the incompletion, yes, but maybe here not the worst thing in the world? No, not on first and ten. It actually gives them a chance to regroup, relax just a little bit. They huddle up, talk it over. Then they get a chance to continue their journey. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Well, maybe that can give him a little bit of a pick-me-up, a little bit of a jolt. One of the few things has gone right defensively. Because other than that, it's really been a first half to forget. Throwing on third and long. Stafford. And that will be incomplete. Well, we're not playing three yards in the cloud of dust football anymore. I kind of get why those old school coaches sometimes didn't want to throw the football. Because if it's popped up in the air, it almost turns into slow motion. And both sides trying to get to the football. And you're holding your breath wondering whether it's going to go good or bad for your team. So they'll play the field position game here as a very nice punt is going to pin them back. Yeah, it's almost like watching a game of tennis, or do you prefer ping pong, you know, back and forth like that? That definitely was excellent, wasn't it? Now Jackson on first down, and the coverage terrific there as that's knocked out and incomplete. Juju Smith-Schuster, the intended receiver, and that'll bring up second down. Second and ten. Here's Jackson again. His throw incomplete. This defense has been very disruptive early on as they force another one to go awry. Seems to be the front and the back end. Pass rush. They've been able to get home. And they're taking the ball away in coverage as well. I love how you put it together. The front and back working in sync. Only way to play good defense. 
And able to get it across the 20 before they get to him. 12 yards is the pickup, and it's good for a Washington first down. And a nice little broken tackle run there by Todd Gurley, the 10th pick in the 2015 draft. And that's what you get with him, that full package of speed, power, able to catch the ball in the backfield. Many people doubted him coming out because of the knee injury in college. <laughs> They're seeing the full top girly now, and it hurts. So we've reached halftime here in the 2020 Super Bowl, Super Bowl 54, as we send you up to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. What a season this has been. Hard to believe it ends tonight, as we'll get back to you guys for the second half of this Super Bowl in just a moment. Meanwhile, in our game, it's been a back-and-forth first half. Who can put it together in the second half? For the answer, we turn it back over to our broadcast team of Brandon God and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Out come the Colts. They'll have it first here to start quarter number three. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Third quarter, and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. They'll run on first down. Smith. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Indianapolis moving the chains there on a gain of 12. They're trying to show that they can run the ball, protect this lead, give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. In Washington territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 48-yard line. On first down, nothing opening up really on the running play. Give him maybe a yard, and it'll be second down. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. On second and nine, Stafford. And he hits his target. This is Luke Stocker. And they're going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at the Redskins 37. When an offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. Big Eddie Goldman there on the tackle. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. Off of play action, here's Stafford. And break, the tight end's got it. And they're gonna have another first down here as the tackle's made at the Redskins 15 yard line. One of the advantages of zone defense, as I remember it, is being able to see the play develop in front of you. One of the disadvantages, when they find those levels where they can hit you with it, sometimes behind the corner and in front of the safety, it makes it tough to defend. He takes us down to about the 12 for a gain of three. They're in a pretty good spot right now with a convincing lead. I think this is where they put on the boxing gloves, start to try and pound them into submission. And the offensive line, they've controlled this game. I don't see why that trend would change now. On the run, it's Smith. They'll get this down inside the 10 for a pickup of about three. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. This will be play number nine of the drive here as they need four yards on third down. On third down, it's Hill. He didn't get the touchdown, but he did get the first down as he's tackled at the one. They get the first. The decision to run on third and medium winds up being a good one. 
They'll run it with Hill. That's going to go as a loss of one on first down. And now it looks like they're going to be in the hurry up. Now a 10th carry for Hill. The second down play, not much better than the first. Just a gain of one there. That didn't just feel like good defense there. That felt like pride, didn't it? He's already gotten into the end zone twice, trying to get there for a third time. No one likes to have the hat trick against them. This Washington defense, they've stood tall the first two plays. Now third and goal. They'll try to run it. It's Hill. And he takes it in for a Colts score. Brian Hill with his third touchdown of this Super Bowl. And the Colts, they add on to their advantage. Still plenty of time left in the game, but now starting to pull away a little bit. Get some breathing room with that one. And I don't want people to think that NFL locker rooms are cookie cutter, that everyone's saying the exact same thing in every situation. But I do know that all 32 teams have an emphasis on starting fast. Game, you know, second half, no matter what, with his first five minutes, first three, whatever, this was a big score to start the second half. So that one, a 13-play drive in total. And it culminates in an Indianapolis touchdown. This is taken at his four. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. Now this will probably be the last play of the quarter. They'll try and start the drive with Gurley. And he'll go down, and that will do it for the third quarter of action. You got it. You got it. One quarter remains here in the Super Bowl. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Jackson. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked off near the 44. And to the 43. So down inside the 45 to the 43-yard line. That's where they'll take over. Well, this defensive pressure has been constant all game long. The pass rush, the coverage. They've all been excellent, and now they'll tack on an interception here as this one continues to slip just further and further out of hand. Had a bit of a lane there, took advantage of it. Give him seven there on the first down carry. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. A good run got seven on first. Here's second and three. They'll run it again with Smith. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. So first and 10 now from the 30. Now Edo Smith. They'll get about six there as he takes this one down to the 24-yard line. On second down now, it's Smith. And they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. That's good for an Indianapolis first down on a gain of 10. Brendan, every great running backs coach I've talked with has always talked about when you have great vision, you're not consciously thinking about your cuts and your moves. You're just doing them. And I think that's what we're seeing tonight. He's probably run them into submission. I think you took the words right out of my mouth. I was just going to use that phrase. He has run them into submission. Wave the white flag. On the carry, it's Hill. And this time they were waiting for him as he'll be knocked down before he can get back to the line of scrimmage. Perfectly designed blitz right there. They took that one from the grease board to the field because they were able to free up their linebacker to get into the backfield and spill the play. Here's Hill one more time. And power running here down to the six-yard line. They get nine yards back on the run there, and they're left with a much more makeable third and two. They'll 
He'll try and run for it. Here's Hill. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. The gain of five that time gives him the conversion and makes it first and goal. Brandon, when a defense just simply can't get off the field on third down, and we all know how important that down is for both sides of the ball, you often feel like you're just a step behind whatever they're doing offensively. And one of the differences in this game, no doubt, third down conversion, and that is going to be a story they'll talk about after this one. They don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. The clock showing two minutes even in what's been a memorable Super Bowl 54. So the Colts in possession of the football as we get you reset. They've got it first and goal in a game that appears to have already been decided. Now Hill, and he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big time play for their defense. On second down, it's Hill. And he is not going to get in as the big bodies stop him at the one. They hold him again, and now all of a sudden, it's third and goal at the one. They'll try and run for it with Hill. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the close fist of the referee. And that means fourth down. No gain on the play. And what to do now on fourth and goal? The offense is going to stay out there. We'll see what the play call is. They need to find the right one here on fourth and goal. They run. It's Hill. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Brian Hill with a record fourth Super Bowl touchdown tonight. And the Colts, they add on to their advantage. And that rushing touchdown is fourth, puts him just one shy of the NFL record in a single game. And we all know he would love to get to that record and even beyond it. But he doesn't need to in order to impress in this one, does he? What a, what a performance. What an absolute great game that he's had here in this one. And after the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. A look at Washington as they come onto the field. And let's face it, this drive is not going to have any bearing on this game, but it's kind of important for one reason, isn't it? It certainly is. you got to get points. And, okay, all right, I'm being facetious here. But you get points, you feel a little bit better about yourself as you move on to the next one. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. To throw again on second down, Jackson. And he comes back with one complete. The Redskins now going to use the first of their three timeouts as they get it right at the 32nd mark of this fourth quarter. Came up a little short on the last pass play. They did get nine yards out of it, leaving him with his third and one. Now Jackson, open man, Smith-Schuster, it's complete. Now Washington going to use the second of their three timeouts as he'll stop it with 25 ticks remaining on the clock. Now it's Gurley. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. The Redskins going to go ahead and use their final timeout as they get it with just 19 seconds left on the clock. Jackson on first down. He's going to find his running back. It's complete. A Redskin first down. The pick up 15 yards. On first 
first and ten, it's Jackson. And that's incomplete. Clock stops with ten seconds left. Once again, they'll go from the 23-yard line on second and ten. Now Jackson throwing again. And that'll be incomplete with just six seconds left on the clock. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. And Jackson throwing once more. Letting one go deep for the end zone. And it's incomplete, almost intercepted. He had a great shot of picking that off in the end zone. It brings up fourth down. If they're going to have a shot in this Super Bowl, they're going to need this one on fourth down. Here's Jackson to throw. And he is into the end zone for a Washington touchdown. 23 yards for the touchdown. And the Redskins are able to close the gap just a bit. So they will get on the scoreboard here. Give them credit for that. Too little, too late, but no zero. Oh, you, you're going slow clap on me. <laughs> Not very nice, is it? No, but they haven't been very nice on offense. It's been a struggle. Just a formality now, but here's the extra point. And it's good, but it's also of little consequence as this game is over. And the Lombardi Trophy will rest in Indianapolis. The Colts are the Super Bowl champs. And when this moment comes, I think you look back at all the blood, sweat, and tears, the offseason, the workouts, training camp, week one, two, three, all building up now to say you're a Super Bowl champion. It's worth it. It certainly is, and rarely do we have a team that hoists the Lombardi Trophy that didn't have their share of bumps along the way, didn't have to face some adversity in the journey, and now they get to just enjoy it and revel in it. And all offseason, they'll be signing their autographs with Super Bowl champion underneath it. And they end this year just how everybody wants to end the year, holding the Lombardi Trophy. What a season for them. What a ride it's been for us as well here in the booth. For Charles Davis and our entire crew, I'm Brandon Gunn. Thanks for watching, everybody. We will see you next season right here on EA Sports. Sports. It's in the game. EA Sports. It's in the game.